So I'm from Los Angeles, um, and uh, sort of the topic today is how to use the sun as a single source of light. Uh, the sun here is slightly different than, than in L.A. In L.A., basically all year round, we have sort of the light that, uh, that I like to use um, to get the street shots uh, that I get. Um, obviously, there's the golden hours, which everybody is used to using, but I'm, I'm used to using uh, the, the light all day long, uh, from the afternoon sun all the way to the evening. I typically go out um, early afternoon, and I walk around all day up until uh, sunset. Uh, so I get these kinds of, of lights. Uh, just a little brief history about myself. Uh, I started um, as, a, as a child drawing, um, painting, sculpting, more into uh, the fine arts. Um, a lot of that also dealt with light. Um, and went to school for graphic design, did that for a few years, and got into photography about five years ago. So it hasn't been that long um, that I've been doing photography. But shooting on the street and studying light uh, really helped me to, um, to learn about the cameras that I'm using and how to use the light as the source. And, and, and a lot of times it's a challenge to use the light. And that's what I like about using the sun as my single source of light. Because sometimes it is a challenge, especially when it's super bright in the afternoon um, or if, even in the shade sometimes. Um, and to get the type of shots I like, I, I, I'm looking for a specific type of light as well. Sometimes it's reflecting off of a, of a window and a lot of times what I'll do is use my hand as a, as a guide. Um, I studied, I walked around studying light for about a year, um, about the first year that I started shooting. And I started off using, uh, I started out doing black and white photography. And that I think really helped me to, to focus on how light works. Uh, a mentor of mine, uh, I was sitting in his class and I was thinking to myself, you know, how do I see in black and white? And so I raised my hand and I asked him, how do I see in black and white? And he looked at me and he said, focus on the light. And that was sort of the epiphany for me to start focusing on that. And it kind of changed the way I saw things forever until now. Um, and so that's, that's sort of what I focus on uh, from then on. <clears throat> And at first, it was hard to, to put it into the photos that I was, that I was taking. And once I got the, the settings, and once my eyes started to adjust to certain types of light and certain values of light, um, and, and started to get results that I really, really liked, um, it was sort of history from then. I, I, it really changed everything that I, that I did. So like, for example, this one is just dappled light. Uh, coming from a window and essentially I was just walking down the street uh, there was a uh, parade sort of going on and instead of focusing on the parade I was focusing on some of the people that were uh, watching the parade and I walked by a store and I, I just saw a figure within within the window and and I kind of looked back and, and then put my camera up and it wasn't actually till I got home when I, when I looked at the photo and just saw what it did to me and, and how I felt when, when I looked at the photo. And, and it made it so much more interesting than just like a flash, a flash on the face or, or just a bright light on somebody's face. I like the intricacies of the light and shadow, um, how it kind of focused on one eye uh, and the mood that, that, it, that it presented to me. And a lot of times, um, that's what a lot of my black and white f f photos do for me. It pre presents a feeling, it presents a mood, and I'm using the sun to do that. Um, let me move to another slide. I like using a lot of light and shadow in my work. And what that does for me is it sort of highlights what I want 
people to look at first and highlights what the subject matter is in my photos. And what it does for a lot of the other things around the scene is it hides a lot of the distraction uh, that I don't want um, in my photo. So for example here, uh, this one, I waited about 40 minutes. Uh, this is at a place in Los Angeles called Alvarado Street. And uh, there's a lot of street vendors. It's, it's, it's changed a lot since I took this picture. Um, but I just waited for this guy to get into the right position. He was talking with somebody and walking around. And then he finally got into that, that position. And I snapped it. But what brought me to that location in the first place was the light that was shining in that area. So once I started focusing on the light and, and where the sun was hitting, I couldn't look at anything else really. The, the sun and the sun's light started to show me what to look at. And I think that's what changed a lot of um, the subject matter that I, that I shot, where I went, um, what side of the street that I'm walking on. So a lot of my friends, we'd be walking around and they're like, dude, why are we on the sun, sunny side of the street? It's so hot. And, and, you know, LA gets really hot. It's been like 100 even just last week. So a lot of times they're complaining about how hot it is. And I, and I tell them, well, this is where the shots are for me. This is, what I'm, this is where I'm gonna get the type of photos that I like. Um, so they, they kind of got used to it after a while. Uh, the same with, with street portraiture. Um, I'm looking at where the light's coming from. I'm looking at reflected light. I'm looking at bounce, bounce light. And for me, it just uh, it definitely hides a lot of, of the distraction and it, it focuses on, on the, uh, the subject matter. Same here, it's, this was about maybe four o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, just waiting around by, by the subway. Uh, capture this, now this, this is covered now, so I can't take this shot anymore. I can't replicate this shot anymore because it's covered with, with some shade. But these are the kind of photos that I like to, to take with, uh, with the sun. Now it's difficult sometimes, and the difference uh, with the shade and the difference with, uh, for example, like a day like today where it's cloudy, I'm still using the sun. I mean, of course, it's, it's bouncing around all kinds of, of particles. And, uh, and, and so something like this uh, I took on a similar day, similar day like today, a cloudy day in Los Angeles, which is, which is rarer, but um, it happens. And this was a portrait I took of a gentleman who I actually didn't ask to take his picture. I was walking down the street and he came out to me like, hey man, take my picture. And I was actually, actually had the previous version of the NX500, which is the NX300. Uh, and I took it with, with that camera, but uh, it's the same, same camera. It's small, uh, discreet, it's light. Um, so th I like using this camera for, for, sh for walking around on the street. I don't have a lot of weight on me. Uh, and again, it's small, it's quiet, and we had a lot of fun. We had a, we had a talk about life in general, and uh, I was able to get this, this really ni nice portrait just with diffused light. Here's another one where it was more backlit, and this is another way to use the sun as, as a light to get a lot of really awesome silhouettes. And uh, this is in an alley in downtown LA. It really smells down this alley, actually. Um, so I couldn't stay there very long. Um, but I was able to get this shot just by um, using that, that light behind him. This is another one where I'm using the same sort of technique. That, that alley is right here, the same, the same light. Um, so this is across the street from, from there, from the previous shot. So a lot of times what I'll do 
um, when I'm walking around and I want to kind of assess where the light's coming from and, and how uh, and what the value is of the light, I'll use my hand. So for example, right here where the light's hitting me, I'll, I'll use my hand and I'll just kind of curve it around and see how it's hitting my hand. And then that way I know how it's going to hit potential subjects. Um, and a lot of times too, I'll just wait around for a little bit and, and watch as people walk by and see where, which, side of the, which side of their face is being touched by the light, um, which direction they're going. Um, if somebody's walking a certain way and the sun's behind them, I'd rather not have that light behind them. So if I'd want to be walking this way so that I can see the silhouette or a highlight um, on their profile. This is another one where it's, this one's more on the shady side of the street. So typically what I'll do when I go out, the, my rule of thumb in downtown LA is I'll start with a base setting on my camera. So I'll start like with um, ISO 200, 500th of a second at F8. And in LA, that's pretty good uh, start, starting point for a lot of the shots that I take. And if the sun's a little brighter, like mid-afternoon, then I'll maybe bump it up to about a thousandth of a second. And that, that really helps with, um, with that, that harsh light that we get uh, down in LA. Another one. So again, with the silhouettes and uh, using shadows, I like using lights and shadows to tell stories as well. And this one's a, near a... Uh, a museum in, in downtown LA and some kids were just playing around and there was actually one shot where the, one of the girls were a lot more visible as far as the details in, in their face and all that but I thought the mystery in this kind of told the story a little bit better than than the previous shot uh, here's another one where I like to use again the selective light like these shafts of light that come through uh, buildings um, I shot in New York uh, for about a week, and my, probably the favorite place that I had in New York excuse me, was uh, the Financial District by Wall Street. The buildings are a lot closer together, and you just get these really awesome shafts of light, and I could selectively uh, shoot a single person or a group of people with, with just that light. Um, sometimes when it's way too bright, I don't like that. I like to have some shadows in my light, in, in my shots. Here's another one where it's a very selective sort of a light that's hitting a, you know, a person. Um, and again, for me, it just, it just leaves all the distraction out and makes me focus on the person's face and, and creates a mood. Here's another example of that. I also like to use reflections with, with, my, uh, with my work and in combination with, with light. And that's a good way to, to create something interesting, something different. Um, a lot of people like shooting old people and sometimes I do too. And what happens with the light is it just creates so much texture with, uh, with the person's wrinkles and the person's face. Here's another one from, uh, from a bus stop at uh, downtown LA. So things like this where it creates lines and shapes. Um, one of the things I used to do for a living was uh, graphic design. And so a lot of uh, that influence uh, started to show up in my work, where I, I like to use a lot of lines and shapes um, using the light and the shadow that's available to me. So this one was one of those times when it was about noon. So it's, the sun was really directly above us. And I didn't think the, the shot would work, uh, but it actually ended up really working to my advantage because what I noticed about the man in the first place was his mustache. It's a really, really 
well put together mustache, well maintained mustache. And one of the things I said to him is, you know, how do you, how do you maintain that? Um, and he said it's a lot of work. He, he combs it all the time. A really nice man. And I think if I shot it a different way, it wouldn't work to accentuate uh, what it was that I saw in him in the first place, which was his awesome mustache. Here's another one where I use a little more backlighting to uh, get the silhouette of, of a person in a bus. And a lot, of, a lot of it showed the texture and the dirt that was on the window. And that's something that I really liked about this photo was all the texture and, 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 uh, and how the light uh, accentuated it. Here's another one where I'm using a lot of lines, a lot of, uh, a lot of shapes to accentuate the person and make sure that I, that person is highlighted. Another one. What I like about using the sun also is the, the difference that it makes with color. Um, I end up using a lot of the primary colors in my colored work. Um, a lot of my work is black and white. And for some reason, uh, when I end up leaving it in color, it, it, uh, it, it's using a lot of primary colors. And I think that really works well with the type of work that I do, and, and, and uh, it's almost black and white, but, but not quite black and white. It has, has a touch of color in there. Here's another one where I'm using actually a couple of different things, the shapes, the silhouette, the shadows, and the light um, as a combination to create this shot here, which is in a Chipotle uh, in downtown LA. So this was fairly recently. It was really, really hot in downtown LA. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll sit at a, I'll stand at a corner and just watch people go by, like I was mentioning earlier. And just the most interesting, hap interesting things come you know, in front of me. Um, a lot of times I'll wait maybe five, 10 minutes. Um, and I'll get restless. So I'll wait another five more minutes and I'll get restless again because nothing's happening. Um, but then I'll, I'll force myself to wait just that one more five more minutes and something cool always uh, happens. And that's sort of a, the second thing I learned from starting photography was, the first was light, of course, focusing on light and then having just a little bit of patience to get something, something like this, something that, that is just so out of the ordinary. Uh, this was a hot day in LA about a couple weeks ago and I have no idea what he was doing. It must have been stinging, something must have been stinging his eyes, but uh, I found it very, very interesting. This was in San Diego, um, using the uh, reflections, and I, I like to get low. There's, um, what's cool about these is I can use the LCD to get super low and get really cool shots. Uh, from from these cameras here, it's a gr it's a great small camera to to bring around. Actually, I, th I think I took this one with with the uh, NX1. Uh, same results. And I love sunsets. I don't post a lot of my sunset shots because um, you know, what kind of my, my the work that I show on like Instagram and uh, my my Tumblr to be a little more consistent. Uh, so maybe I'll start a, a different uh, page, just showing all my nice sunset shots. There's a lot of lovely sunsets in um, Los Angeles, especially by the beach. Um, but this one's just literally right across the street from my house, um, and just the amount of uh, just amount of color that happens in, in certain sunsets uh, is amazing. Um, and it's just waiting till that right, about the right time to, to go out and, and get it. Um, talking about this camera, tomorrow there's gonna be a ditch day. 
And if uh, you want to trade your old DSLRs in for a new uh, Samsung NX500, it's tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Okay, so the question is, uh, one strategy is to sit and wait, and one strategy is to walk around all day, uh, right? Yeah. Pretty much in a... So the way that I decide is, for example, if I don't know the area too well, I'll walk around a little more to get familiar, to, to find a backdrop, to find a background that I really like to use where the light is really, really nice. And if I find a place like that, I'm going to stay and kind of work the scene. Um, now, there's, there's times when I get really, really restless, so it's been like maybe 15 minutes and nothing's happened. I, what I'll do is I'll kind of reset. So I'll walk around the block and I'll come back and I'll wait again. So it kind of reset the whole thing. There's new people walking around. There's new, uh, uh, the, the lights change maybe slightly. So that, that's one way that, that I'll do it. Um, if I'm walking around all day, for example, New York was a, was a, like, walking around, like, pretty much all day in New York. So that was a different type of environment because I, I was still exploring. I was still learning about how light hits the buildings there, how light hits the people. So if I'm kind of in the study mode uh, or the research mode, then I'll be out studying it that way. And then once I find a place, I'll kind of stick with it for a little bit and see what I can get. For a lot of my photos are candid, so I, oh, sorry. Uh, he's asking if I get approval and, or how I get approval for shots. Right. Well, a lot of times it's for street photography, it's, I'm not uh, putting a logo on it um, and selling it for anything. So a lot of it's just personal, personal work. Um, so uh, if somebody wants to buy a print, I mean, they, they can buy a print, but typically, um, by law, I can take any pictures I want to in public. So that's kind of how I get around that. Uh, but there's a lot of times where I won't ask for permission. And there's times when the person's that interesting. Uh, for example, the man with the mustache, where I just had a, to talk to him and, and really ask him questions and, and get to know him a little bit before, before I took the picture. So the question is, do I shoot in black and white, or do I shoot in color and convert it, and if I listen to music while I'm shooting? Um, a lot of times I do just shoot in color, uh, but I'm shooting in raw. But because I'm focused on the light, uh, like my mentor told me to do, um, it, it, tra it translates just fine for me. Um, a lot of times my color work looks even better because I'm focused on the light. Um, it just it just enhances whatever colors. There's a there's a saying: our eyes collect the light that that falls upon them, and really that's all I'm doing is just collecting all of that light, and all that information, uh, and and, and um, a lot of times it does translate really well, either in black and white or color. And for me, it's just a matter of how I want to present that photograph, how it feels for me, and what I'm what, what mood and what um, message I'm trying to portray in that in that. Now about music, once in a while I do listen to music, and if I am, it's, it's more um, sort of jazz and um, it's kind of slower music. So yeah, <laughs> any other questions? Sure. Right now, the NX, the NX1, it's a great little thing. I, I usually don't have the 16 to 50 on here. It's, it's a quite a heavier uh, setup for me walking around all day. I'll put the, the 20 millimeter, which is the closest to a 35 that I have right now. Um, and it's, it's a great setup, super lightweight. Um, I can stick a, a 16 millimeter, which is the same sort of um, size as the 20 millimeter and the 30. Actually, the 30 F2 is a really nice sharp camera, uh, nice sharp lens. And it's which I shot that uh, the gentleman with the, uh, the really close up portrait. 
uh, that 30 millimeters, pretty awesome, actually. Any last questions? All right, well, thanks for having me, guys. Um, I'll see you guys around. <laughs>